This video demonstrates the use of Optum G2 for the ultimate limit state design of an anchored sheet pile wall. The situation is the one shown here. We have an 8 meter deep excavation supported by a sheet pile wall which is anchored uh, 1 meter below ground level up here. The material is a sand model as a more coulomb material so we have a cohesion of zero, we have a friction angle of 30 degrees and I'll assume in the following that this is a design friction angle. We have a unit weight of 18 kN per cubic meter and then we have finally a soil wall interface friction angle of two-thirds the internal soil friction angle. So the task ahead is to determine reasonable values of the three design parameters, the anchor force, the moment, the yield moment of the wall, and the embedment depth. And before we do that, it's important to just recognize that there's not one unique solution to this problem. There's an infinite number of possibilities of N, M, and D that each lead to a uh, satisfactory design. For example, by increasing the embedment depth, we can usually decrease the uh, moment and the anchor force. Um, in the extreme case where we have a very large embedment depth, uh, basically the minimum anchor force is zero, corresponding to a cantilever wall. On the other hand, for a fixed embedment depth, by increasing the yield moment, we can usually decrease the anchor force, and vice versa. So the strategy we will adopt in the following is to fix the embedment depth at 4 meters, and then first in one calculation minimize the necessary yield moment, and then in the second calculation minimize the necessary anchor force. So in that way we actually obtain not one design but two designs. First, that's the blue and the green here, first we minimize the moment, and with that solution comes an anchor force, simply to maintain equilibrium, and then in a second calculation we minimize the anchor force and with that solution comes a, a moment as well uh, simply for equilibrium from equilibrium considerations again we have earth pressures acting on the wall and they give rise to moments in the wall so let's uh, switch to Optum G2 and try to do that and the um, I'll first find the geometry, I'll draw a box to which I will apply a material and I'll use one of the default Optum G2 materials, the medium sand MC, it's a basic more Coulomb material and I will adjust the parameters to what we have for this particular problem. Features, a standard fixity to support the, this box on, on the edges and um, I will then use the plate tool to define the wall. So first it was it was eight meters for the excavation and then four meters embedment. And I will then cut out the excavation by defining a rectangle like that and then deleting this area. Then for the anchor, in the first calculation, the anchor is not really an anchor, it's just a force necessary to maintain equilibrium. So that can be modeled in this case as a plate BC. So I'll apply that. A horizontal uh, plate BC with a um, with a horizontal fixity. And then uh, for the um, soil wall interface friction angle you'll notice that we have the plus and minus symbols here on either side of the wall if I click the wall uh, then I have an interface plus and a minus corresponding to these symbols and I have a reduction factor as well which refers to the uh, strength parameters and the reduction factor that we should apply is two-thirds like that and same for the upper part of the wall And now finally I'll just adjust the dimensions of the domain here. They got a bit too too large or larger than necessary. I use control shift to do that. So I hold down control shift and then I can basically uh, drag um, lines or points. 
So here's, here's, here's the first part of the problem. Um, and what we want to do is we want to basically minimize the moment in the wall or minimize the strength of the wall. And the way we do that is with a strength reduction analysis. So we reduce the strength in the wall to cause collapse, to be just on the edge of collapse, which is the idea of ultimate uh, limit state design. And you'll notice in the settings of strength reduction analysis we have this reduce strength in and then the default option is solids. That means reduce the strength in the, in the soil. We don't want to do that in this case. We actually want to reduce the strength in the structs. In this case uh, the structs is the, um, is the wall, the structural elements. Um, we have a choice of different element types. I'll stay with the lower bound uh, element for this analysis that gives us conservative uh, solutions, solutions that are on the safe side. And I'll use a thousand elements and I'll use mesh adaptivity. So in this analysis we are reducing the strength in the structs, reducing the strength in the wall to cause collapse and in that way end up with the uh, smallest possible uh, strength. In the second calculation we want to basically switch things around the uh, moment, the strength of the wall is no longer really of interest. We can assume we have a wall of infinite strength. So I'll apply a rigid plate to the wall. But um, we want to reduce the strength in the anchor. So we can't reduce the strength of a regular plate BC. So instead I'll use a fixed end anchor which comes with a, um, with a finite strength. And again I use lower bound elements and mesh adaptivity. So the two calculations first minimize the strength of the wall and secondly minimize the strength of the uh, anchor. I should say here in the first analysis uh, the uh, strength of the wall or the reference strength of the wall is, is 800 kilonewton meter per meter. That's not really important. What is important is that the wall has a a finite strength uh, as opposed to the second calculation where the wall has has an infinite strength. Okay, so let's let's set the analysis running and uh, we get a reduction factor which refers to the reference strength of the wall and let's see what we get get up to something around 7 so that would be a necessary uh, wall moment we can already uh, see now of about 100 and 110, 115 kilonewton meter per meter and the second calculation is running as well where we minimize the strength of the anchor. And here are the results. If we look first at the first calculation, well then the collapse mechanism looks something like this. You can see there's no movement on the anchor. There's a rotation about the anchor, but of course the anchor is, is fixed horizontally, and then we have a yield moment basically form here uh, in the wall. And if we look at the bending moment diagram, it looks something like that. We can see a maximum uh, yield moment of 115 here, and we have almost the same with the opposite sign uh, down here. Whereas in the sec and in the for the um, anchor force, so that's basically the reaction up here. We have, well, we have 115 as well. So let me just note down those numbers: 115 and 115. And then in the second calculation, where we minimize the strength of the anchor, how does that collapse? Well, not surprisingly, it, it collapses by a failure in in the anchor. The wall is 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 rigid. And if we look at the bending moment, we are up to 213, so considerably more than, than before. But the anchor force should then have decreased somewhat, yes, to 59. So these are our, our two solutions, and we can enter them into the figure here. Let's try to do that. So first we minimize the the moment 
and the solution was 115. To that solution came an anchor force also of 115. Um, then in the second calculation we minimized the anchor force. We got that down to 59, but at the expense of having to increase the moment to 213. So these are our two solutions, and um, which solution is is optimal is of course uh, very much problem dependent. But at least there's there's a choice of in this case two designs in the manuals that come with the program. A procedure is described for also calculating solutions in between these uh, two extremes. Um, that manual can be downloaded along with the program from our webpage at optumce.com.